Hello, fellow public connoisseurs, and welcome back to the quick take. A few news stories again today, most notably an update regarding Conor Gallagher and the contract situation. And it's just started raining heavily, God's sake. Oh, well, I'm going to keep going. And uh, we have an update regarding Victor Osman and his potential move to Chelsea in the summer. But before I continue, i just like to quickly remind you I'm running a giveaway with ownership.com. We're at 15,000 subscribers. I'm giving away three King of London lights. It was all you need to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and then check the pin comment down below for more information starting off with the news regarding Conor Gallagher of course Conor Gallagher scoring Chelsea's late minute winner against Leeds to keep go uh, to keep Chelsea alive in the FA Cup last night we now face Leicester I think at home at Stamford Bridge uh, should be not an easy tie but should be a tie you'd expect Chelsea to walk away with a win and then we progress through the FA Cup but we do have an update regarding Conor Gallagher and this is going to annoy a number of Conor Gallagher fans and a lot of people who do believe Conor Gallagher should stay i you know, I'm, I'm, I'm both ways. I think, you know, I wouldn't be annoyed if he stayed. I also see the reasons as to why he could be sold. Um, but sources close to the matter have told Mail Sport that there has been no significant progress. It started to rain really heavily. No, I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, uh, no significant, uh, so no significant progress on discussions over an extension for Conor Gallagher. Chelsea are currently reluctant to break their unofficial £150,000 per week pay ceiling which is something we've heard uh, before apparently Conor Gallagher um, he wants to stay at Chelsea at all costs but he also doesn't want to undervalue himself so that's why he's asking for a significant pay rise to be on the same level as the likes of uh, Enzo Fernandez or on the, as the likes of um, the likes of uh, oh, sorry Mark Kukrea, um Moises Caicedo kind of that range there um, Chelsea have set a minimum price tag of 50 million pounds to sell Conor Gallagher in the summer with contract talks at an impasse uh again it's, it's an interesting situation with Conor Gallagher um I did mention that I'm kind of in between like the reasons for him staying is he is very handy in terms of pressing in the attack and he is starting to get goals now um I think uh he there is some other thing uh, there, like there are areas of his game I would like him to improve like his decision making potentially in the final third and in the attack I think could be slightly better uh, maybe his composure in front of goal on the big occasions but that comes with time that comes with experience not every player is born with that and just able to you know score a, a million goals at the age of 18 19 like that's not what I'm asking from him I just think that there are areas of his game that he could um, definitely work on if he is going to be playing a more advanced role up the field playing at number 10 when there are potentially better 10 options out there and even even at the club we saw how Mikhail Madrid played last night of course bad timing on my part releasing that video um, at half time um, I think Madrid scored around that around about that time so yeah the video was going to go out regardless so um, but Madrid did score last night had a very good game playing in, in a more central role um, and then Conor Gallagher came on towards the, the, the latest stages of the game. Obviously, I uh, won the game with a, a brilliant assist from Enzo Fernandez. Nice turn and a brilliant finish from Conor Gallagher. Um, but also, I do see reasons as to why he could be sold. Of course, he comes through the academy. And that will be very uh, attractive for the owners when, when, when they want to try and sell him. And then take some of the heat from FFP off their backs. Um, and yeah, that's £50 million of pure profit right there. Very, very attractive deal for them. Also, that allows us to then maybe have a little bit more leeway when we want to spend a bit bigger on certain areas like, I don't know, striker. Chelsea scouts currently in the, in Portugal watching the Sporting Benfica, Benfica game. Sporting currently won a lot. Ruben Amram Sporting, a uh, lovely header from across. Uh, a bit like how Napoli scored a lot of their goals through Victor Osman last season. But fantastic game going on there. It's currently half time as I'm recording this. I'm really enjoying the game. Uh, but yeah, again, Conor Gallagher, very interesting one. Do you think he will be sold in the summer yes or no again contract talks are at an impasse and if you don't want no if you don't know what impasse means it means this is the definition of impasse uh, a situation in which no progress can be made or no advance advancement is possible reached an impasse on the negotiations cinemas dead end deadlock stalemate standstill so well, you can't put it much better. The contract talks with Conor Gallagher are at a stalemate chess talk right now. We move on to news regarding Victor Osman. This coming in from uh, Jack, uh, Ben Jacobs, who was interviewing uh, John Obi Mikel, uh, I think, today. Uh, Osman loves Chelsea and wants to come. He wants to follow my footsteps as a Nigerian to play for Chelsea. We also have this. 
from uh, Ben Jacobs. Again, reporting from the interview with John Obi Mikel. I am his agent, Agent Mikel. I keep texting him. Of course, we've heard rumors that John Obi Mikel and Didier Drogba have both been in fairly consistent contact with Victor Osman these past few months, trying to convince the Nigerian striker, the fantastic world class striker, to join Chelsea even during this period, this lull of uh, painful results for the for the London club. And then we have this from Obi Mikel. Osman has looked at London. You want to live there. Um, you want to live there instead of places like Liverpool or somewhere else. Uh, he has a lot of interest to PSG, Man United, but I keep telling him to narrow your mind on one thing, the Blues. And I think, I think you know, Victor Osman, I've, I said, I've finished writing uh, the Osman breakdown. I've recorded it. I'm currently editing it right now. I'm taking my sweet time. I know it's very annoying, but I, I don't want, I want, I don't want to rush this. Want to get it right. And through analysing his overall game and seeing how well he played during the 2022-23 season and the and the adjustments Spalletti made within that Napoli side in order to get the best out of him, I think he is perfect for exactly what we need. I think we create a lot of chances that Osman would thrive off of. I think um, this is a league that he'd do very well in. He's a very strong striker. You know, he likes to operate between the two centre-back pairings. Um, and then, you know, maybe we set up in a way where we drag uh, one of the fullbacks out of position and then the and then the fullbacks uh, space that has been created is then filled in by another centre-back having to move across the field, which then leaves Osman with a one-on-one -on -one battle with a centre-back going up against him. Ball played into Osman. He wins that battle and then 1-0. Or, you know, even if... You know, even if we're not playing against a team that likes to attack or likes to press heavily, if they want to sit back, then Osman's more than happy operating, as I said, operating between the two centre-back pairings. He can receive the ball into feet, hold off players, get the shot off. He can drift out slightly wider um, within the penalty area or in the in the goalkeeper's box and then um, get the shot off under a very strange, very crazy angle. And he can score from that angle. We've seen it against Asulo. We've seen it against Roma. Um, Chris Smalling was able to hold him off. Bang, goal, back in the net. Uh, crazy angle. Angle. fantastic striker 25 years old Chelsea fan growing up and apparently he wants to join Chelsea and it's very rare that players like Victor Osman players at this point in their career where they could go to Real Madrid Barcelona PSG Manchester United clubs that you maybe not Manchester United but clubs you could argue maybe would provide him with a better chance of winning um, significant silverware uh, it's very rare that these kind of players decide to join a club like Chelsea at the moment not not Chelsea two three years ago but Chelsea at the moment where we are strong Struggling in the table, um, young squad, unbalanced squad. Uh, the manager situation is up in the air. He's probably gone at the end of the season, and he actually wants to actively join. I don't want to call it a mess, but he kind of he, he wants to be the guy that drags Chelsea out of this rut. He wants to be the guy that takes control, that follows in the footsteps of his idols. In John, as I said, in his Nigerian uh, Nigerian idols, in John Obi Mikel, um, Victor Moses just comes to mind off the top of my head. And of course, his idol growing up, Didier Drogba, wearing the Chelsea shirt, leading the line in the attack for Chelsea. Victor Osman wants the deal to happen. 130 million euro release clause. Do you think it will happen, Victor Osman, to Chelsea? Yes or no? And let me know your thoughts on Conor Gallagher in the comment section down below 50 million pounds if we can't get him on a new deal is that fair enough for Conor Gallagher and if he does go is there a midfielder in mind or is there someone in mind uh you would have to replace him you know we could look towards Barella maybe we don't go for Ruben Amrin maybe we go for Nzagi who apparently we have been in talks with or at least we have contacted his representatives of course he's top of the Serie A is Inter hard of doing fantastic and even then if we go for Nzagi maybe that opens up the avenue to push for DeMarco when Kukri leaves in the summer and when Ian Matson and Lewis Hall leaves in the summer I don't know I'm just waffling at this point but it's something to think about Inzaghi to Chelsea Ruben Amram to Chelsea who would you who would be your pick out of those two maybe I should do a video comparing those two as managers like I did with the Nagelsmann and Lewis Enrique hmm hmm lots of things to think about as always if you like the video like comment and subscribe I've been the quick tech and I'll catch you on the next one see you later